meteorologist Mark Molnar. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Northeastern. And it, as always, I'd like to have you here uh, listening to these updates because these updates are going to get continue to get more frequent as this weather gets more and more crazier here. And crazy it is because we're going to continue this upcoming week. If you, so I know some of you are actually sick of snow, but we got more snow coming. So. Here's the deal here. There's going to be a long drawn out system. This next system is going to break records down into portions of Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas, and then head northeastward up the Appalachians for later Valentine's Day into Monday, and then particularly into Tuesday as this system goes coastal on us in the northeast and in New England. So let's get into these big details here as we continue to go through this long drawn out process. Uh, of this major winter storm because we're in a very active weather pattern right now that looks to continue into the foreseeable future. Always don't forget to subscribe to me if you haven't already. Uh, it gives you the updates. Hit the bell button, like as well, and share the video. So I want to thank you for all your support. Let's break down the details into these big winter storms, especially the one on Tuesday, Monday, late Monday into Tuesday. Taking a look at the impacts out of the storm, I'll briefly touch on the impact scale map here, anywhere from low to extreme. At this point of the game, I have many areas in the major to extreme, and here's why. As the low pressure moves out of the Gulf Coast region on late Sunday, early Monday, you can see all of that freezing rain across parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, into Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Northern Virginia. It will be interesting to see because that's where we see the heaviest band of freezing rain set up and especially across the deep south here in the extreme categories that's where I expect anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch to up to three quarters of an inch of ice which is very bad for the trees and power lines. You get up into portions of Pennsylvania here this is where I have you into the major to high category uh, simply because at this point in the game, we're not sure how much sleet versus freezing rain is going to fall. If it's those areas that stay persistent with freezing rain, we'll stay into the quarter to a half inch range. And then into northern uh, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, parts of northern and northern central Ohio, that's where I see one to as much as two feet of snow falling. Take a look at the model plot data here. Take a look. It's getting tighter by the hour, by the day here, which is good news. We're seeing uh, much better agreement. The Euro is still further west and to the north, uh, which is going to result in more sleet and freezing rain, obviously, for many areas. The Canadian Euro and the Argem, they are further east and south, which would keep more areas to the north and the central regions into the snow and frozen precipitation and may allow more mixing along the coastline instead of just plain rain. So there you have it. It takes us up through Tuesday morning, becoming a coastal Tuesday p.m. and then exiting towards Nova Scotia, but towards Tuesday evening. So it is a fast moving system, but it's got a lot of moisture to work with, a lot of short waves along it uh, that will produce a lot of low pressure waves. Taking a look at the snowfall map here across uh, much of the country. This is a very expansive storm, as you can see. Places like Oklahoma City, look at that, 10 to 15. Over towards portions of Cleveland, up to Buffalo, Erie, Syracuse, the Tug Hill Plateau region along the Lake Ontario, Lake Erie regions. Look at that, upwards of 18 to 24 inches. In the darker pinks there, places like Binghamton, Albany, over towards portions of Indiana, much of Ohio. North Central Ohio getting into the 12 to 18 inch range, even up into portions of New England. This is, this is where we'll see the biggest snowfall accumulations out of this storm as a lot of the moisture and energy rides along and up the Appalachians and then exits off the coastline there. Closer to the coast there, you see New York City, a lot of mixing going on. You're going to be right on that 32 degree line as well as Harrisburg. So there'll probably be a lot more sleet and freezing rain mixing in towards the coastline. Even some rain you can see in southern New Jersey, parts of Cape Cod over there as well. But there it is, the red zone and the uh, lighter pinks. That's where 12 to 18, 18 to 24, 1 to 2 feet out of this system. So this is a very widespread uh as I told you, it's a high impact, large scale system to be had here. And it's going to be long drawn out from later Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. Let's get into the ice totals. Taking a look at our ice totals, this is very concerning, especially from look at that, the Gulf Coast of Texas, Louisiana, up into parts of Mississippi, northwestern Alabama, right and through the central Tennessee portion, up into eastern Kentucky, parts of West Virginia and extreme southern Ohio 
and into Pennsylvania, southern Pennsylvania, southeastern Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, parts of downstate New York there, uh, the lower Hudson Valley, of course, into parts of extreme western New England. That's where we stand the chance of seeing solid quarter-inch freezing rain amounts and locally higher to a half an inch in these areas. And then parts of the deep south here could see upwards of three quarters of an inch of ice in some of these areas closer to uh, Louisiana up to parts of Mississippi and Tennessee and Kentucky. This is not very good news at all. Pennsylvania, we're going to have to watch you because it could be a very close call between a lot of sleet and a lot of freezing rain. So I have you pretty much in the solid quarter to a half an inch of freezing rain here as well. So this is a very bad side of the system. We don't often like to talk about ice very much, but we do have to talk about it with this system because there's a lot of warm air overriding the really cold polar air at the surface. We have pl plenty of cold air for this system to work with. Of course, we got the polar vortex going on that's supplying those double high pressures across Canada and the northern part of the Midwest with all of this cold air. Taking a look at the mesoscale side of the storm, yes, there will be a mesoscale component as the system slides from parts of Delmarva just off the coastline here of New England. Uh, from 5 a.m. Tuesday to 4 p.m. Tuesday, this is where we stand to see the best chance of banding precipitation. That's where we'll get those snowfall totals in the blue zone, upwards of 1 to 2 feet potentially. And then, of course, you have the freezing rain and sleet component, the freezing rain component, obviously much more detrimental. There in the pink zone, you can see parts of Harrisburg, Scranton, just north of New York, just east of State College there, west of Boston and south of Albany. That's where we'll stand the chance of seeing some convective moisture uh, moving in and heavy freezing rain is possible. In the blue zone, that's where we'll get snowfall rates of one to two, maybe as high as three inches an hour in some areas, places like Erie, Buffalo, Syracuse, Albany, and as far south as Binghamton. Here's the zoomed in snowfall map here of my forecast area in the northeast. There it is. There's the red shading. Places like Syracuse, Buffalo, Erie, pretty much a solid 18 inches, almost uh, to, to as high as 24 inches. See, most of these areas see 18 to 20, 21, 22 inches out of this. Into the pink colors like Binghamton, Albany, and just south of Erie, Pennsylvania, just north of State College and Williamsport. That's where you'll see 12 to 18 inches of snow into parts of Vermont and parts of New Hampshire as well in the upper Hudson Valley. Also, we get into the battle zone, which I call it, from State College over to Williamsport, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, uh, Poughkeepsie, um, port just west of Boston. This is where we'll see the six to eight, three to six inch range trying to win out here. It depends on where you are and how much sleet you get. And then of course, south of Interstate 80 in eastern Pennsylvania, uh, parts of Allentown, Harrisburg. I think you'll see more freezing rain. Southern Poconos, gonna have to watch northern New Jersey, parts of southern New England as well. Uh, that's where the snowfall totals will be cut way down due to sleet and freezing rain. Here's that zoomed in freezing rain ice map. This is the bad side of the system. This is the ugly side of the system. As beautiful as freezing rain can be, it's very horrible on the trees, power lines, and travel. Look at this. You have anywhere from a solid quarter to a half inch of freezing rain. Uh, places like uh, Harrisburg, Allentown, northern New Jersey. Uh, Wilkes-Barre, you're just on the border there between a tenth to a quarter inch up towards portions just south of Poughkeepsie, parts of southern New England here. We're going to have to watch this very closely because right now it's looking like a lot of freezing rain also on the northern edge of that towards Scranton, uh, maybe more of a sleet scenario, places like Williamsport as well, a lot of sleet mixing in with the snow. So we're going to have to watch this. This is going to be a very interesting scenario uh, between the battleground that's going on from Interstate 80 southward in Pennsylvania here. Take a look at precipitation totals across North America. Very busy, even out west. Portland even seeing snow in the 5 to 7 inch range. That's crazy all the way down to the valley floors. It goes to show you how strong this polar vortex is. Look at the heavy precipitation across much of the country. A lot of tropical moisture in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas getting funneled into this system. Widespread 1 to 2 inch totals. In those areas where you see frozen precipitation, that's a lot of snow and a lot of ice. So this is why we have all the moisture to work with here. Take a look at the upper air level pattern. You have the polar and subtropical jets coming together. This is why we got so much energy, so much moisture, tropical component here. 
meeting up with all of this polar vortex centered over Central North America into the Northern Plain States, Midwest, and Great Lakes. So much cold air to work with here. And of course, we have the system that's going to move from the Gulf Coast region up the Appalachians to just off the coastline near Delmarva. This is where we're going to get all of the moisture and strength of this system. This is why it's going to be so widespread. Look at that even out west there. Lots of storminess. Taking a look at your Sunday as this small scale system exits the northeast, the one that was affecting Virginia and Maryland on Saturday. You can see we'll have some AM snow showers up to maybe an inch before 7 a.m. and then some light icing, freezing drizzle down towards coastal areas. But this is the day that we see the warmest. Many areas finally getting to freezing, but don't get used to it because let's take a look at Monday. Take a look at your Monday. Here it is, the first wave of this system moving in. Even though the system is down towards the Gulf Coast, this has many energy components to it. We're socked in with snow developing across much of upstate New York, Pennsylvania. There's the ice. We have some freezing rain, freezing drizzle. Some sleep pellets mixing in from Harrisburg, maybe as far north as Wilkes-Barre, New York City, Boston, and Pittsburgh initially. Pittsburgh will flip over to all snow eventually later Monday into Tuesday. But there you have it. There's the snowfall. Most snowfall amounts will be in the 2-4 to four inch range on Monday into Monday evening. Take a look at Monday night. This is where things really get cranking with this system as it starts to move up the Appalachians. Uh, you can see the heavy snow really taking hold. And look at some of those temperatures. This is why I think that the uh, snowfall will outdo the models because we'll have a very light fluffy snow initially with lighter winds. This really gets the snow growth rates going, the snow, uh, the structure of the snow, its integrity, and it's able to really pile up in fluffy amounts. It's further south here into eastern and southern Pennsylvania towards Harrisburg, Scranton, in Boston, these areas. New York City. This is where the battleground starts with the sleet and the freezing rain, especially south of Scranton here. This is where we start to see a lot of sleet and freezing rain, especially after 3 a.m., uh, where we get the heavier uh, snow, sleet, and freezing rain amounts over to sleet and freezing rain, definitely before sunrise. So that is a big concern here. Here's your Tuesday across the Northeast. This is the big day. This is the finale of the storm. Low pressure pretty much starting to ride up along the New Jersey coast, up along that stalled out frontal boundary. And there you have it. It pushes the sleet and freezing rain line further inland. I believe it'll make it as far north as Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. Harrisburg pretty much socked in with the freezing rain. New York City will be teetering between 32 and 34. So you probably see some plain rain mixing in as well on Long Island. So it'll cut down on snow, sleet, and freezing rain amounts, and up to Boston as well, teetering right on that 32 degree line. But look at this further inland from Pittsburgh, State College, Binghamton, Albany, Burlington, Syracuse, Buffalo, Erie, and Toronto, all socked in with heavier snowfall accumulations. Uh, that's where I think we'll see the heaviest snow, and there in upstate New York into northwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, totals uh, coming pretty close to the 1 to 2 feet range, especially that 12 to 18 inch range. And then closer to Lake Ontario, probably 18 to as much as 22 inches. So there you have it. Let's get into my extended outlook for my hometown viewers. Binghamton to Scranton, Upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York and northeast Pennsylvania. Here it is, Sunday, the only day for quite a while that we make it to the freezing point. Don't enjoy it because look what happens here in the extended outlook. We'll see the less than an inch of snow before 7 a.m. on your Valentine's Day Sunday. But take a look at this. We get into Monday, especially from noon onward. We start to develop some snow up to two inches expected by evening, only making it up to 28. And that's when the temperatures start to take a tumble for Monday night. This is why I think we'll get the light fluffy snow the snow that can really pile up as we get those snow ratios up quite a bit six to eight inches additional snow accumulation monday night it should make the travel commute for tuesday morning just terrible look at that getting down to 16 supporting that nice light fluffy snow and there it is tuesday continuing with heavy snow likely up to eight inches additional so this should bring our snow totals to between 14 and 18 inches before ending tuesday early tuesday evening and bringing us maybe some peaks of sun by wednesday so stay safe out there if you can't if you don't have to travel especially later monday through tuesday don't because it's not going to be very good at all so there you have it as always don't forget to like me on facebook Mark, weather northeastern and also 
Hurricane Northeastern for summertime, tropical season. Also, don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube. It really helps the channel. If you subscribe to Media Mark here, just hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get all the notifications. Also, in addition, make sure you hit that like button if you like the video. Also, down below, if you want to put a comment or a question, feel free to do show so as well. So there you have it. This is what we're looking at for this big major winter storm scenario. As always, I want to thank you for viewing my channel, viewing my video, watching along with me here, and I'll keep the updates coming out.